What a great opportunity it is to get to share the Christmas season with all of you. We are going to be talking about the gift of God's grace all Christmas long. And we're beginning tonight with the opening act. How many of you have ever been to a concert? If you've ever been to a concert, you know that before the main event happens, there's always someone who is the opening act. It's the artist that sets the tone for the evening and gets everyone ready for what is to come. It warms us up for the main event. And tonight I want to discuss with you the opening act for the Christmas season. Getting our hearts ready for this most wonderful time of the year. Before Jesus was born, there's a unique story of the birth of another baby by the name of John. We know him today as John the Baptist. There's some things hidden in his story that are very significant to what God was trying to give us a hint about in the Christmas season. He was trying to let us know in this opening act the real reason he was sending his son, Jesus Christ. John's father was named Zechariah, and he was the priest that was selected to burn incense in the temple. The incense was symbolic of God's holiness and the people's prayers to God. And the incense was offered on the altar of incense, which was very close to the altar of sacrifice, or the brazen altar. As it was offered there, they would take this incense. Once they would take the coals off the brazen altar, they would place that on the altar of incense, and then they would lay the incense on top of those hot coals. There they would offer this up to God. Man's attempt to pray to God included the necessity of sacrifice. Man's hope in approaching God could only be made possible if he gave something up that was really important. It was symbolic, in this symbolic setting that God spoke to 
Zechariah, and he said this. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Isn't that amazing that right there in the place where the prayers of God's people were going forth, the angel appeared and said, God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Through this story, we're going to build a paragraph and then hashtag this entire message with the message that God was sending to us through the events of the birth of John the Baptist. I want to begin tonight by talking about the place where this opening act took place. It's by no accident that it takes place in the temple at the altar of incense, knowing all that it symbolized. The close proximity of the altar of sacrifice was no coincidence either. We see two different significant things here. This was where man reached up to God in prayer. But the Christmas season is all about God reaching down to man. Man and all of his efforts could not form a permanent connection, but God was showing us his willingness to reach down further than we could ever reach up. There was nowhere where man offered gifts to God trying to appease his holiness with the blood sacrifice, but he was, he was never successful. But God was saying, what you've been given me is not sufficient. The only way this will work is if I send you a gift. It's about man receiving from God. This opening act was telling us that the gospel was not about what, what man could do for God, but rather about what God could do for man through the gift of Jesus Christ. We could not reach God, so God reached us. We could not offer him suitable sacrifice, so he would offer it for us. And we need merely receive his provision in faith. Our gifts to him were insufficient, so he chose to give a gift to us that is all sufficient. And we can trust the gift of God that he sent that first Christmas morning. The place was very special where this prayer was answered. But then there is the people. Zechariah was a priest in the region of Abijah. It's pronounced like Elijah. And Abijah means my father is Yahweh, or God is my father. We see the region in which he served. God was telling us something. He sought to reestablish his place as our heavenly father. He was extending to us his love, saying, I want to be your father, and I want you to be my children. And I don't know about you, but I am so happy to be a child of God tonight. I am so grateful that God loved me enough that he was in his sending of his son, he was saying, I want to reestablish a connection with you. I want to be your father, and I want you to be my child. And I can tell you, he's the best father ever. Wow. Zechariah, his name means Yahweh remembers. So far, we have Yahweh, God, is our father, and he hasn't forgotten our condition. He is mindful of our lost and sinful condition. And in the region of Abijah, with a man named Zechariah, we get no further than that before we know that God is there. He is our father and he hasn't forgotten us. Then there's the mother of John the Baptist. Her name was Elizabeth. And her name, one of the meanings of that name is, my God is abundance. So now we have Abijah, God is my father. He is aware of my sinful conditions and what we are lacking, and he plans to supply what we need in great abundance. Aren't you glad that when God answers a prayer, he answers it completely? He doesn't send half of what we need, but he's always the God of more than enough. He is always the God that has more to give than we could ever ask. 
And as a matter of fact, the scripture says, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask or think, to him be glory. We're here to give him that glory tonight. And then we come to the baby named John. His name means Yahweh is gracious. We find the word grace. We get no further than the opening act before we find the message of Christmas in its entirety, and that message is of the grace of God. Now we have God as our Father. He is mindful of our sinful and broken condition, unable to achieve holiness on our own, and he plans to supply what we need in great abundance, and now he tells us what we need is grace. I am so glad tonight that when God looked down and saw our pitiful condition, he did not give us the justice that we deserve, but he gave us the grace that we didn't deserve. God is a good God. God says, the law has left you lacking, but grace is going to complete you. Grace is the favor you cannot achieve, you have to receive. You can never step into God's good graces. You have to receive God's good grace. Grace is his favor. You can't earn it, but he wants to give it. And why should we ever work to earn what God wants to freely give? And I choose to give it to you in abundance, God says. Wow. The angel told Zechariah about John, and Zechariah questioned how. See, he was schooled in the Mosaic law, and he was also schooled in natural law. He knew that he and mama were getting on up in years. And he looked at the angel and says, how's this going to happen? Well, I guess we would all be faced with the same question. If we were getting up in years and God shows up and says, I'm going to bless you with a child, the best, the, the best thing you can say is how, God. And that's exactly what Zechariah said. So God shut Zechariah's mouth through the entire process. What a different thing for God to do. I wonder why he did such a thing. He could not utter a single word until he could say or speak what God had spoken to him. They asked Elizabeth, what are you going to name your baby? She said, John. And they began to say, you don't have anybody in your family named John. Why are you going to name your baby John? Because God gave that name. And I can see as they asked Zachariah, and he was still mute. Now, some of you wives that are here tonight, this may be your dream pregnancy, that your husband could not speak a single word the whole time that you're pregnant. And it would probably be best for the husband sometimes too. But they came to Zachariah and they said, Okay, we've talked to her, and, and what she says doesn't make any sense. What are you going to name your child? He could not talk, so he had to motion for something to write with. And he wrote down the name John, which means grace. And when Zechariah could get in agreement with the plan of God for all the ages, when he could say the word grace, God freed his tongue. That's amazing to me. Here's the significance. God was saying that there is nothing in your lineage, Zechariah, like, about what, like, like you know, the thing that I'm fixing to do, that I'm about to do. There's nothing you've ever seen before that's going to match what I do at Christmas. And he was also saying, you don't have to add your opinion to grace. You don't have to add anything to grace. Like so many churches do today, they preach a message of grace plus something, plus something that's tied to their particular doctrine or something that's tied to their t particular set of beliefs. But God did not want Zechariah to add one thing to grace, and he doesn't want us to do that either. God's grace is exactly what we need to have relationship with our Father, and it needs no additives whatsoever. He told the apostle, my grace is sufficient. 
Grace is the only way that we can have relationship with God. And today I am preaching a, a sermon of grace plus nothing because the grace of God is the favor of God that empowers us to have a living loving relationship with a God who only wants to be our father the Christmas story is beautiful because it's all about the gifts of God's grace and when you look at the place and you look at the people you already see the message is the message of grace I want you to begin to embrace that grace in your life that grace will produce everything in you that is necessary for you to have relationship with God. Trust the gift of God's grace. We've talked about the place, and we've talked about the people. Now I want to talk about the promise. In Luke 14, the Bible says, He will be a joy and delight to you. Now I imagine that's exactly what the angel said to my parents when I was born. He will be, you can laugh out loud, it's okay. He will be a joy to you. My first, my, my, my older sibling, the first child was named Joy. I can't imagine that the angels would set my parents up for something like that. But that's what the angel told him. This child is going to be a joy to you. Many will rejoice because of his birth. It is so awesome to see that in the birth of John the Baptist, the grace of God was already being revealed. And many people today rejoice because of the goodness of our benevolent Father in heaven. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited and so grateful for the grace of God that is all sufficient in my life. Now, with all of the symbolism, what is the power of the promise that God gives to us with this gift of grace? The first thing is this, restoration. Look in Luke 1, 25, it says, In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. In that day, if a woman was unable to bear children, it was considered a reproach. It is no longer considered that way. Thank God for there are many reasons sometimes that a woman may be unable to bear a child. But in that day, they were not as compassionate. And they would say that this woman had some sort of reproach. She is under some sort of disgrace. But Elizabeth said, when grace came, it removed my reproach. Are you catching this? When she said, John, who means grace, was born, he removed my reproach. And as John took away the reproach of Elizabeth, grace has taken away the reproach of our sin. The glory that Adam lost was given back to man by the grace of God. And we no longer have to walk around with our heads down with the shame and guilt of our sin because grace has removed the reproach. And all of those people who think bad of you because of who you used to be, it doesn't matter anyway because the grace of God has lifted the reproach of our sin. And today we are in right standing with our Heavenly Father because of the gift of God's grace. By grace, He is our Father and we are children of the Most High God. By grace, the failures of our past are far removed from the favor that's in our future. I could be the first to say in this room tonight, I've got a past. I believe that everybody in this room could say the same thing. There's something somewhere in our past that would bring a reproach on us. If I look back over the fence that God put up of grace, there's a lot of things that would break my heart today. There's a lot of things about me I don't want people to find out because I wouldn't want them to lose confidence in who I am. But you know what? I am today not who I was back then. And I was not then who I am now. And the only difference is the grace of God. It's not because I've learned to do it good enough. It's not because I've learned to relate to God on a higher level. It's because I've allowed God to relate to me by His grace. And the grace of God made the difference in my life and removed the approach of my reproach of my sin and it will do the same thing for everyone who accepts grace wow restoration the next message i see is in the word reliance 
Under the law, man bore the responsibility for the relationship. He had, he had to keep coming back time and time again trying to get it right. They were content, constantly worn out trying to be good enough for God, offering sacrifices every single day. I love the little skit that I watched the young people do one time when the young man's talking to God and says, God, I'm sorry I let you down. God looks back to the young man and says, you were never holding me up. That's one thing that believers in Christ need to grasp today. We're never holding him up. He is always holding us up, and he's doing it by the power of his grace. See, under the law, you could let God down. Under the law, you could fall short. Under the law, you could not measure up. But under grace, everybody measures up. Under grace, we all measure up to the stature that God has set for us, to that purpose and plan he has. We would never reach that on our own. But by his enabling grace, every person can measure up to God's glorious standard. God says, you can rest now. You don't have to beat yourself up anymore. You don't have to keep trying to be good enough, wearing yourself out. God wants us to stop trying and to start relying on the divine power of the grace that he's given to each of us. God says, in grace, I am assuming responsibility for the relationship. I'm taking it on my shoulders. The relationship no longer depends on you. It depends on me. All you have to do is say yes to grace. And if you'll say yes to grace, it will begin a journey of reliance upon me. And you'll learn to lean on my shoulders when the load is too heavy for you. The third word I see in this passage is the word relationship. There is one more verse in the opening act of Christmas, and it's when Elizabeth's cousin came to visit. Now, this was significant because her cousin's name was Mary. One of the meanings of the name Mary is beloved. In her womb, she carried a baby named Jesus, Yeshua which means Yahweh is salvation. When Elizabeth, abundance, pregnant with John, grace, heard the greeting from Mary the Beloved carrying Jesus, salvation, something cosmic took place. Isn't it powerful? Wow, when abundant grace comes in close proximity to salvation carried by love, there was an explosion of the Spirit on the inside of Elizabeth. She recorded when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what happens to us when we accept grace. The Holy Spirit ignites the very life of God in every one of us. So we now begin to live in that Zoe, that God life. See, that's the reason that man couldn't reach up to God. That's the reason man couldn't measure up to God's standard. That's the reason he could never connect on a permanent basis because this life has its limits, but his life knows no limits. And if you're going to relate to a God without limits, you're going to have to have a life without limits. And that's exactly what God gave in this time of Christmas. So let's hashtag this opening act tonight. God is our Father, Abijah. He sees our sin and neediness. He hasn't forgotten us. His plan to correct it isn't judgment, but an abundance of grace based on His love that brings us eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. I know that's the longest hashtag you've ever seen. But it is the message of Christmas to us all. And we have a living, loving relationship with our Heavenly Father. Let's set the tone for the Christmas celebration. Many of you love Black Friday. You shop those Black Friday deals, and man, you think you've gotten the best out of Christmas. But there is a better deal than Black Friday. 
There is a better deal on the table today, this Christmas, and that deal is the gift of God's grace, and it is freely given to all who will receive, and you can't get a better deal than free. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. Wow. Remember, Abijah, God is our Father. Zechariah, he hasn't forgotten us. Elizabeth, he is abundance. John, of grace. Mary, he loves us. Jesus, he saves us. How man or religion can add to that, I will never know. How I can add to that by striving so hard, trying to be good enough for God to love, I will never know. I say the gift of God is more than enough. Everything God will ever do for the world, he has already done in the gift of grace, his son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we simply stop in this room tonight to say thank you for the gift of grace. We quit trying tonight and we begin relying on you. We can't achieve it, so Father, we willingly receive it. Thank you for the grace that empowers us to be your children and allows you to be our Father. Thank you for the gift of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're a pastor, volunteer, or you just want to get involved in your local church, we invite you to join us for our Leaders in Training Conference in January of 2016, Get Lit, featuring Pastor Barry Smith and guest speaker, Dr. Mike Chapman. Live worship led by the Generation Changers Band. Breakout sessions include mastering social media, small groups, youth and kids ministries, and more. Pre-register online today at gcchurch.tv.